The COVID-19 pandemic has affected many not-for-profit and arts and culture spaces in Ottawa, including those serving the disability community. Many organizations have introduced online virtual spaces, which has been challenging for some and embraced by others. Organizations in Ottawa who continue to offer their programming during the pandemic have shown perseverance and support for the disability community by shifting to a virtual world. I'm Chris Valley, and today I'm speaking to resilient members of these organizations about how they're continuing to connect with each other during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is Staying Home and Staying Connected. Hi, Jake. It's nice to meet you. Jake Riseborough is a prolific artist and a member of Bean Studio, an art studio in Ottawa that supports artists with developmental disabilities who are working in both visual art and creative writing. What has it been like for you to create art at home and online instead of being at the studio? It's very social online. It's more of a... It's more of a social, like the, we talk online, but in the other, but when we were just doing it, you know, in, in, in the, in the, in, in the studio it was more work, 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 but we, we talk, but at lunchtime. Have you found it a bit more lonely recently? A little bit, but I have my, my mom. When the pandemic hit, Bean quickly shifted to online workshops and programming, naming it Bean Home, providing art kits and structured online sessions for their members to continue to create. Jake's mom, Rosalind Risebro. I think it's been excellent. Um, the the uh, people at Being Studio have done an outstanding job of helping their artists connect, con stay connected with each other. Uh, they've been making, putting together some really good prompts um, to in help the inspire the artists. And I think uh, for Jake, it's been very important, uh, a very good focus for him. Welcome to Artists Connect, everybody. My name is Debbie Ratcliffe, yours truly. Debbie Ratcliffe is Bean Studios artist in residence. Hi, Debbie. What has been difficult for you to create art at home instead of at the studio? It's harder virtually than it is in the studio because the studio, you got a big space and you're surrounded by your co-workers and, and, and nothing but art is being produced. Like, I mean, they're doing their own kinds of artwork and it's totally beautiful what they they've made and i've done some stuff at home but it's not the same like it's not the same closeness as it was there at, at the studio what makes it different being a part being a part of not seeing each other every other day, right? Like being in the same place at the same time. I want to talk a little bit about loneliness. Do you feel a little lonely now that you're working at home instead of in the studio? Like when we had to shut down, I was very disappointed, depressed. And then my sister told me that they were um, gonna do Zoom calls. It's like, I'm back. <laughs> that must've felt really nice. It was really nice. Like you have that overwhelming feeling of, yay, I can see my friends. I can say hello. M Southwood is a program liaison with Bean Studio. Hi Em, can you tell me what it was like to transition to virtual programming during the pandemic? By April, we had arranged for our first Zoom calls and I was really nervous because I had never done anything like this before. Uh, you know, we have probably, you know, up to uh, 15 artists sometimes uh, on a day and we had no idea whether anybody was going to show up. Um, and then the Zoom, you know, we opened and 
all of a sudden there everyone was and it was like I, I think I cried because it was just so amazing to see everybody it was so amazing to hear everybody and it was you know like uh, it was so natural Annalisa Kiss Kiss is an artist who was inspired by the works of Freda Kahlo and shares that inspiration in her portraits with vibrant colors of red, blue, and yellow. Annalisa, what has it been like to do virtual classes and what do you feel when you connect to Bean Studio? Wonderful. <laughs> really inspiring and soul search. I can really see how they really accomplish with all the staff there and I'm really love to communicate with them a lot and that's my favorite part being with all my friends and all, uh, all the staff at being what is the thing you like the most about virtual classes oh a lot of virtual classes they always uh, so different type of uh, topics about draw what you feel uh in the heart what I see is the mind and what I develop my art is like pulling out uh, my soul and into my hands and into my hands I put it into my artwork that really uh, speaks from, uh, speak from my, uh, my experience and also my knowledge. As we know, it's easy to get lonely in, the, in these times now. Uh, and if someone is watching and they're feeling lonely, what would you like to tell them? Do you have any advice for them? Uh, yes, actually. Don't be lonely. Uh, extend your wings and fly away like a bird and try to explore uh, the art that you love so much and and be, be at your best and show off your, your artwork. People will love it. Thanks, Annalisa. Coming up, I meet with dancers and an instructor from Propeller Dance Studio, a contemporary dance company in Ottawa. This is Staying Home and Staying Connected. Welcome back to Staying Home and Staying Connected. I'm Chris Valley. Propeller Dance is recognized as a pioneer and leader in Canada, providing inclusive, integrated and accessible performance opportunities, dance training and education for people of all abilities. The company creates socially engaged work celebrating diversity. Ada Chan is a multifaceted artist who plays the violin. She's a longtime member of Propeller Dance who has danced in both the professional and recreational program. Ada is very happy Propeller is offering their classes online. It's very um, convenient to where I live so I can still join and still connect it for, for everybody. And tell me, what's it like when you log on to Zoom and see all your friends there? It looks like it's a group of family and um, and we can dance all together and, con and connect for each other. Okay, here we go, this group. At Propeller, disability is understood as a difference in the human experience rather than a limitation, something to overcome or a lack of ability. When they pivoted to virtual programming, they didn't know how successful the programming would become. I spoke with Geneviève Beaulieu, a dance partner specialist who during this time has seen their recreational program grow to other cities outside of Ottawa. Most of the, our participants were able to do the, uh, the transition to digital classes and we even got more uh, participants because uh, now we have uh, people coming from outside of Ottawa where as usually our classes are given in different um, places in Ottawa. So yeah, so that has been really special to have people coming from Toronto area. Did the studio think that the virtual sessions would become so popular? 
I didn't think so, because, especially because we really connect um, through touch in our in-person classes. Uh, and that energy we thought would not be present on online, but somehow it is, which is quite amazing. And we're gonna fly somewhere else, traveling. Taryn Allen lives in the greater Toronto area. I'm currently a volunteer in um, receptionist for the Center for Independent Living in Toronto. And I've been volunteering with them for um, almost uh, seven years now. Um, so I heard about the power through them. And I actually went to see a propeller dance performance. And so when I heard that propeller was offering virtual classes, I wanted to join because I, I love um, music and dancing, so I was excited to join. So you joined after the pandemic began. Has it been challenging for you? Yes, um, it can be challenging because my boss, um, some days I'm, I'm more fatigued than others. And so um, not having a, a set routine of certain activities um, makes it more difficult. And so it is very challenging um, to, to have more motivation um, and, and, or, and physically the power is just enough to keep my body moving and active. Taryn and her classmates in the recreation program were able to work together and create an online performance which they presented on Zoom. For the International Day of People with Disabilities, um, we actually um, all learned pieces of a dance called Intertwined, and we used a green string to express that we were all connected. So that was really um, enjoyable. Taryn hopes that Propeller continues to offer their classes online once the pandemic is over. I, I hope that if the combination of both um, online and, and in person, because um, I, I have found that in some, for some circumstances, like my circumstance or somebody who has m mobility issues, it is really helpful to have Zoom as an option. Taryn, do you have any advice for people who may feel isolated right now because they can't go out and experience their programming in person? I would say that um, they're definitely not alone in their feelings of loneliness or, or is um, isolation and if there's people that they can reach out to um, on the phone or on Zoom, however they're able to connect with people, if, if they're able to definitely um, do that. Coming up. Everyone have their materials already, your paints, your water, mm -hmm. your brushes, and uh, yeah. paper towel or something to work with. I'll learn about some other programming that is allowing members of the disability community here in Ottawa stay connected during the pandemic. This is Staying Home and Staying Connected. Welcome back to Staying Home and Staying Connected. I'm Chris Valley. When Fern Qantas moved to Ottawa when her husband, who was in the Navy, was transferred from Victoria, BC, she was looking for a place to connect. A place that was similar to the Disability Support Network in Victoria. She found the Ottawa Independent Living Resource Centre. When we came to Ottawa, that was the first place I reached out to to see if they did anything along the same line. And 
So basically, since then, they sent me their bi-weekly calendar of events. And um, I always thought I would do it, but most of their classes are in the afternoon. And I don't have as much uh, ability to get out of the house in the afternoon. So I was, it was always on my to-do list or my bucket list for when I felt good, I could go back in November I saw that they were doing their art programs um, by distance. And so I realized that I could do it here at home and then possibly join their Zoom sessions to see how they were doing the paintings. So I just, once I get the outline, I'm just gonna take my brush. I'm not gonna add any more paint onto it. And I'm just gonna kind of blend it using little circular motions. So I reached out and said, hey, this looks like something I could possibly do. And then the peer coordinator wrote back and said, well, I can start you right now because we have extra things left over from our November order and I'll just drop it off for you. The Ottawa Independent Living Resource Centre focuses on empowering people with disabilities to facilitate greater independence by providing active and meaningful programming and support for all aspects of their lives. Fern is a wheelchair user who lives with complex regional pain syndrome. She has limited mobility and shares how isolation during the COVID-19 pandemic has been. It's been extremely lonely. Um, already before COVID hit, I was um, mostly inside during the winter because it's not clear enough for my chair and I'll end up getting stuck. Mm. And um, my personal support worker no longer comes. So I used to have someone come in five days a week and keep me company, at least for some portion of the day. Tell me, what is it about the art kits provided by the Ottawa Independent Living Resource Center that has helped you during this time? I don't notice that I'm by myself. I, uh, I might have a lot of pain and I think about not doing it. And then I say, no, I'm gonna use this as my distraction and I start painting and for the time that I'm doing it, I don't think about pain. I don't think about um, being lonely. I just, it puts a smile on my face and uh, it doesn't matter how it turns out. It just matters that I've redirected my brain for a portion of the day. Carol Gregory also utilizes the services of the Ottawa Independent Living Resource Centre and is excelling in their online art sessions. I believe I'm done. Awesome. I'm Carol Gregory and I'm doing artists and ceramics mainly most of the time. And I'm doing arts, different techniques, stuff like that, and then ours. And doing with the group session as well every Wednesday, mostly, and I do three to three days. What kind of art do you create? I like to do um, interesting surroundings, bushes, trees. I did all kinds of plants, flowers, buildings with, with trees, and so on. And I do with different kinds of colors, like blues and greens and different browns and shades, different shaded colors. Carol, what has it been like to only see your friends online instead of in person? Difficult. <laughs> Difficult. Tell me about that a bit. Because I miss, I miss them. I like to see in person the best because it's easier to uh, talk than computer. <laughs> which I don't know about computers. <laughs> and who has been helping you with them? Don has been inspiring me and helping me in a lot of ways, even computers. Carol's niece, Don Green, shares with me how the Ottawa Independent Living Resource Center, or Oil Rock, and its members have been a support of Carol's during the COVID-19 pandemic. It's been so important. Um, it gives her a sense of community. It calmed her down. She's also very excited every week for her weekly Zoom meetings with the group. It doesn't take the place of in-person meetings. 
but she does seem to calm down and just chill. There's a lot more laughter. Um, she gets to ask more questions and because Oil Rock looks at things differently, they get to ask questions from their point of view that sometimes my mom and I just don't think about. So it gives Carol a very real sense of community and support. Even with the COVID-19 pandemic, what has it been like for you as a family to spend time together? It provided a chance to get out of the house and go for walks. And that really calmed everybody down, just being out in nature and mm. appreciating that we could hear the birds, the leaves rustling in the wind. Um, I know it also inspired Carol's artwork and she liked to talk about those walks when she would have her, her group meeting. She'd be so excited and say, oh, I went for a walk. And you know, nobody was around. <laughs> so things like that, um, it really helped her frame of mind. One of the many things I've learned through meeting these incredible people is that no matter what uncertainty we're facing in the world, social connections play such an important role in our mental wellness. Seeing everyone speak so fondly about these organizations reminded me how important it is to stay connected while staying home. Lovely, everybody. Wonderful today. Host, Chris Valley. Producer, Emily Ramsey. Videographer and editor, Darcy DeToni. Integrated Describe Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Audio Post, Mark Phoenix. Graphics, Mike Smith. Senior Producer, Michelle Dudas. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc. <laughs>